I get frustrated when I'm playing drums, I hit my head with the sticks. It's so hard for me to talk about this stuff because I know how stupid it sounds. It's like creating YouTube videos is possibly, in theory, the easiest job in the world. I only have to pick up my driver's license today. So complaining about it or talking about the psychologically difficult sides of it uh, How was your Halloween, Emma? just seems pathetic to me. Wow, you don't talk now? For whatever reason, I haven't cracked the code on how to be a YouTuber in a healthy way. I've actually never found a YouTuber who's figured it out. It's almost impossible to keep up. And because of that, you rarely see a YouTuber create weekly videos for longer than a few years before they just quit. This chart is what I like to call the Emma Chamberlain paradox, and it's used to explain the inevitable fate of almost all large creators. As their fame increases, their likability decreases. Put simply, they get pretty boring. Hey guys, it's Donna, and before I get attacked by Emma Chamberlain fans, I'm gonna tell you right now, Emma Chamberlain is not boring. She's the opposite of that. I also have gas. As the video progresses, it's going to make more and more sense why I call it the Emma Chamberlain paradox. So give me a little bit of time to explain. Secondly, before I give you any sort of explanation, I'd like to know your personal opinions. Can you think of any other YouTubers where you liked their old stuff, but as they grew more and more successful or famous, your interest in them kind of went down? Oh, and you can't say me, you trolls. Obviously, don't be mean, be respectful about it, but I'd like to see if what you wrote fits with this theory. But first, a word from today's sponsor, Morning Brew. Maybe if these YouTubers subscribed to Morning Brew, their channels would still be relevant. Kidding! Or am I? Guys, you know the story. I was always angry in the morning, and I thought it was because I'm just not a morning person, but then I realized that right after I wake up, I'm on social media and Twitter. Those platforms are filled with angry people, and when you're exposed to that right at the beginning of your day, it affects you. But also, I didn't want to be completely in the dark of everything going on in the world. In comes Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a free daily newsletter delivered Monday through Sunday that won't leave you angry. And unlike traditional news, which can be boring, Morning Brew is witty, relevant, and informative that gets you up to speed on topics such as business, finance, and tech in just five minutes. I just found out that gold miners in Canada found a mummified baby woolly mammoth. Look! It's so cute! Apparently, there's also a bio startup trying to resurrect these guys. Yeah, what could go wrong? Another thing I always hear people saying is that they should make newer movies and stop with the reboots and remakes. Yet the new Top Gun passed 1 billion in global ticket sales in a single weekend. The only other film to do that was Spider-Man No Way Home, another film that plays on nostalgia. Anyway, if you are a YouTuber and don't want to fall into irrelevancy, subscribe to Morning Brew. It's free so there's no reason not to subscribe. Sign up for Morning Brew for free using the link morningbrewdaily.com slash internet impact or click the link in the description below. What you are looking at are the faces used to represent YouTube, but today new viewers may not even know who they are. They've had the streaming fan bases, revenue you and I only dream about, and appearances in traditional spaces. Instead of those opportunities launching their career into the A-list bracket, they've all vanished from public attention. No, not literally, but they're no longer the faces you associate with the site. Every couple of years, they are replaced with new influencers, and this happens over and over again. This drop always seems to happen right as their opportunities look limitless. Now, I'm not saying all their money disappears. In fact, those that fell off are probably doing way better than most of us. They may even have nice, stable jobs. This isn't even about their view count. That just happens to be coincidental. No, this downward slope is more about their viewers in agreement to this phrase. I miss the old insert YouTuber name here, aka your videos are boring. Oftentimes it's downhill from there no matter the amount of opportunity handed to the creator. Emma Chamberlain has received those comments as well, which she addressed in 2019. So one of my most common comments that I get on my videos is that we miss the old Emma. Emma has changed. She 
sucks now. Oh, I used to like her, and now she sucks. Oh, she sucks. It's difficult to place an exact number on how many changes Chamberlain, or any YouTuber for that matter, has done to their brand. This is because the creator's mindset is often to slowly tweak their content and try new things rather than a conscious rebrand. One thing's for certain though, Emma Chamberlain 2017 is not the same as Emma Chamberlain 2022. I estimate that she has had about four phases of content changes so far, correct me if I'm wrong. There was the uploading to YouTube for fun phase, the I'm gaining traction so now I'm going to upload with intention phase, the LA phase, which doesn't necessarily mean they moved to LA, but it's the phase where they gained the most success in a traditional sense. And lastly, we have the phase where we are in now. Most creators begin to descend in likability during the LA phase. Chamberlain's channel, on the other hand, has been holding strong for over a year now, transcending this paradox. To figure out this anomaly, let's examine why many decline in the first place. There are specific reasons platforms like YouTube have become the behemoth giants that they are. I love you. Despite the quality of film and TV heading in a parabolic direction. You know, if you were to go back to the beginning of the millennium, just several years before the birth of YouTube, movies were in their blockbuster era. The special effects, the makeup, the action. Even TV had a grandiose aura to it, no matter how simple the storyline. This made the success of YouTube so shocking. Millions of people were willing to watch some kid talk to their camera in their bedroom, the complete opposite of a big budget movie production. So I asked you on Instagram why you watch YouTubers. What do they give you that movie slash film does not? Side note, if you want to be part of the videos, follow me on Instagram. Many of you had answers that could also be applied to traditional media like self-improvement tips or uh, education like your channel. You know, flattery will get you everywhere. Or Demofo's funny. So yes, all of this for sure, but I mostly wanted aspects that are unique to online influencers. So one of you said, I think is the fact that they seem closer and that they look like your friends a real person. Yes, I indeed am a real person. Personability. They seem more like people. They have likes and dislikes. Flaws. A lot of movie slash TV celebrities seem like these perfect, untouchable people, and influencers aren't like that, though some are getting there. You're more likely to chat with them on Twitter, etc. These answers have made the YouTuber's cause of growth pretty clear. The gradual rise happens because there is a market for human connection, for wanting to see the average person do their thing, from the mundane to the extravagant. Emma Chamberlain certainly isn't the first to produce content that builds upon this. However, she is unique in the aspect that her popularity transpired at a point in YouTube where most creators began to follow the footsteps of Hollywood. I'm opening a real store that sells expensive products for only $1. You have to spend money to make money. So I'm gonna give that theory a try. Chamberlain started her YouTube journey, as most creators do, simply uploading whatever inspired her. Rants, vlogs, shopping, cooking, whatever. I don't know who this would be interesting to, uh, but we'll see. 1.5 million people, apparently. Now, nothing about this content was technically special, but that's what people liked. Why do, why do people just love you? I, like, truly don't know. She drew in a mostly young female crowd that loved seeing her do her thing, whatever that may be. All across YouTube, this was happening. It had been happening prior to Chamberlain as well. Individuals were attaining followers and fame by being real. Opportunities came in droves for these people just being themselves. I think you're real and I think you're honest and that's, and I can Thank kind you. of see that when I watch it. I go, that's <laughs> This model became so successful, there grew a format for online content, for authenticity, 
Lindsay Ellis has this great video called YouTube Manufacturing Authenticity for Fun and Profit that examines a YouTube series called How to Cake It. The series is a YouTube version of a cooking show your mom might have playing in the background on a Saturday morning. Strong emphasis though on YouTube version because it attempts to manufacture authenticity to fit the framework that is YouTube. Instead of just a straightforward polished production of a chef instructing viewers how to cook, one of the crew members is Mike up and there is this continued back and forth between talent and crew member. Because there's like tomatoes on it and some grass. I don't think those are tomatoes. <laughs> it's like they're having a conversation and the mistakes are deliberately left in to paint the picture that you're watching an average person just like yourself. Philip DeFranco films his videos lately in a regular room at his house. The set of his office is made to look like he's shooting in a living room. The one at his house is very simple and has added fan decor. Instead of building this set that simulates a professional news broadcast station, DeFranco is taking a more personal approach, and it works. Lifestyle YouTubers do the same thing. Casey Neistat shows himself adjusting camera angle instead of cutting that segment from the video. Other vloggers show themselves walking back to pick up the camera after setting it up to capture their desired angle. Is it worth me pretending that I actually left? Because I'm just doing that for the video. I have to come back and get the camera. Verbal mistakes are left in talking head videos, and Chamberlain herself will use Ken Burns or other editing effects to emphasize a feeling in her video, mostly awkwardness and bad jokes. When it comes to this channel, I will sometimes leave a few mistakes or bad jokes in. I'm not talking about 50 Cent fans. 50 Cent members are government employees who are real people. I try to include your comments also into the video, so we kind of break this fourth wall even more. This imperfection creates the feeling of authenticity or connection that we are regular, unpolished people. And we are. I'm very regular and unpolished. <laughs> Simply designing content to fit that framework wasn't enough to keep channels afloat. Authenticity is more than just leaving your imperfections in the final cut. It is actually expressing true, genuine thoughts and your life story. Now, of course, that type of content only applies to lifestyle YouTubers, channels that are educational, based on documenting or commenting on other matters, most likely aren't in danger of falling down this spiral. Hey, Vsauce. Michael here. Vsauce is still safe, ladies and gentlemen. Viewers are more watching for that subject matter. However, if you drew in a crowd based on expressing the authenticity of your life, your channel may be heading toward a downward slope the more successful you become. The movies rarely did well. The Netflix series abysmal, TV shows canceled, live events awkward. So In desperation to hold on to their slipping relevancy, many would come back to their YouTube channels only to be met with less viewership than before. The new media utopia supposed to take over TV that many online personalities promised was exposed as a short-lived trend, much like silly bands or sea monkeys. I think many like to rationalize the decline of YouTuber content to fame and money, but I don't know if I can fully agree to that sentiment. A lot of people miss the old me. You know, I used to be blonde and like more annoying in my opinion and a lot more sad. So that was the old Emma Chamberlain, whatever that means. Now I'm apparently very different. You know, I grew up a little bit, I moved out. I moved to LA. Even though many comments were left about missing the old Emma, her view count didn't change, and that's important to note. She certainly wasn't living your average teenage relatable life, but people still cared enough to continue watching her journey. Relatable or not, she was expressing the real her. Actually, most YouTubers do this. This phase in a lifestyle vlogger's career is one point they get the most views, in fact. This reality is why I don't believe fame and money are the culprits to a channel's doom. And then it was all about people being like funny and like honest about their real lives on social media. But then even that found a way to become kind of fake in a way because then people were faking these like real moments. Like they were faking a relatable life. I think this decline instead comes from YouTubers no longer willing to be authentic during fame. Perhaps no longer willing is the wrong phrase. It may be more like they feel like they can't be authentic. You see, during the success or LA phase, I believe they are genuinely happy and express that on camera, garnering a massive amount of attention. 
With that success, though, comes a new set of issues that an audience is likely to find unrelatable. If expressed by the creator, their issues may come off as tone deaf and privileged. This fear causes the content to manifest in different ways. The first is done by hiding behind a wall of success. In this instance, the creator halts uploads to online content unless they have some sort of brand deal. They transform into the polished, put-together celebrity you see in Hollywood, and rarely express any flaws and vulnerabilities that they would have in their old videos. I think this may make for a successful traditional career, but they lose some of their original fan bases in the process. Creators that have done this, I think, are Liza Koshy and Troy Sivan. The second pattern inauthentic creators fall into is producing their old format, or maybe even hiding the new them. This is seen as inauthentic because people change, you get more successful, yet you're trying to do the same thing. I think a great example of this is looking at Tyler Oakley's videos. When he did his collaboration videos with other creators, it was genuinely fun. You could tell they were experiencing this lifestyle for the first time, and it was interesting to see how he and his friends would interact with his newfound fame. Inevitably, that bright-eyed innocence to the screaming crowd and money would stabilize. It would become part of their daily life, a stressor even. I truly believe that if YouTubers like him were to somehow convey this, their audience would pay attention. The videos with friends would become less and less as the work would take over. Oakley was doing big things in traditional media, and his videos just became a highlight reel of what he was doing. It was no longer a documentation of what he and his friends felt. When that expression left, so did his viewers. Oakley has attempted to come back, but something about his videos became very stale. It felt like this was still 2014 and Oakley had not grown. His videos, his personality, everything was the same. We know that it's not, though. Chamberlain, on the other hand, continues to retain her viewers because her new vlogs show an authentic progression. It's done in an interesting way as well and not always verbalized. Chamberlain typically films on an old camcorder, giving me a very nostalgic effect. She has elements of her genuine self sprinkled through her career. I don't know why I just decided to zoom into my receding gums. But she isn't painting the illusion that she is still 2018 Emma. Oh! This! Chamberlain's celebrity interviews, for instance, show her growth, but also exemplify the YouTube vlogger we relate to. I don't have to explain it to you. Well, I'll see you in there. Can't wait. Love you. Bye. Love ya. <laughs> Ironically, Emma doesn't perceive herself to be fully authentic. I also felt this pressure to be myself on camera. But sometimes if I was being myself, myself wasn't something I really wanted to show. It wasn't something I'm, I'm, I was proud of. My whole career, people have always been like, it's really cool that... Emma's so honest with the people that watch her videos. On one hand, yeah, I'm honest on camera and I'm unapologetic about shit that I say. But on the other hand, there are times when even in a, in a weird way, my honesty was sugarcoated. Some weeks, I'm sad. And some weeks, I don't want people to see my face. It was m more common than it should be that I was forcing myself to be in a good mood and forcing myself to go out and do stuff for the sake of my video because I didn't want to bring negative energy onto the internet. However, expressing that very thought contradicts her perception. Without being conscious of it, authenticity is such a big part of her brand. She has made the decision to only upload videos when she's inspired to do so. Some would argue that's a career killer for YouTubers. Her feelings towards social media are kind of reflected in her vlogs, even if she never verbalizes it in these videos. And I'm sure viewers can sense that. Even though Chamberlain has achieved a lot, her audience hasn't abandoned her. And I think it's because they appreciate her willingness to be genuine with them. Now, it can be argued that Chamberlain is still fairly new to the YouTuber world compared to her 10 plus year counterparts. 
making it possible for her channel to fall into irrelevancy. Ugh, sorry, I hate that word. However, PewDiePie has started to upload the same types of vlogs, where he documents his move to Japan, and these videos do exceptionally well. That is quite the difference from his typical content, where he reviews memes, TikToks, and whatever. To me, the success of these videos shows just how much an audience is drawn to authenticity. Not the manufactured kind. Genuine authenticity. More money and fame being poured into influencers isn't necessarily a negative shift. Creators like Mark Rober and Mr. Beast have produced great content because of this. The danger or downward spiral comes when they let that dictate the videos they create. Are you giving away a car to someone you love because they need it, or do you need to give one away for a brand? Are you doing this grand experiment because you're genuinely curious about the outcome, or are you copying Mr. Beast? The audience can tell. YouTube was, is, an answer to inauthentic content. I'm passionately in love with making videos, but I don't have much footage. This summer, I'm going to make a lot of videos. You're gonna notice that once you get too polished, a new type of content that's somewhat more authentic always props up. Like right now we have TikTok. When people started uploading high quality Insta photos, all of a sudden the photo dump trend started popping up. People want to connect through authenticity. So the Emma Chamberlain paradox doesn't really describe Emma herself. She's just one of the more widely known creators who is known for gaining traction through her personality alone. And I don't know. I didn't really feel like throwing another creator under the bus. So uh, <laughs> that's the end of the video. Uh, be sure to check out Morning Brew and stay psyched.